just arrived in Germany after a 15 hour travel day. Haven't slept. And we're setting up drones in a few hours. It should be interesting. Look at the sky, Pusa. The sun is not shining in the sky today from the Germany. Pretty depressing, huh? It's like the music that we're about yeah. to release. We don't even know what we do, right? In our music. myself bro it's gone bro that idea is gone it's just gone you came up there and then it's gone i know it <laughs> we take it <laughs> bro bro you should hey this is actually you know the part is this part no no this part is the part on Instagram where the guitar player shows the drummer how to play it. I came prepared. I did my homework. Schwarzenegger movies. <laughs> True Lies. Classic. <laughs> and um, Expendables. Really? That's yeah. top three? It's mm. so shitty, it's good. Mm, okay. Mm. And um, Terminator. One or two? Close, one. You like one better than two? Mm. Mm. So what are the, uh, the hallway my <laughs> How are you feeling after three days? Good, exhausted, but it's good. I'm honest, it's really good. I feel good. Do you feel good? Yeah. So after recording this kind of shit for three days, and you still got a fourth day tomorrow, would you recommend being a and recording engineer for I'm progressive sure. music? Yeah, 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 yeah. You enjoy it? Yes. It's more fun than straight ahead pop or something that's a little it's bit more listenable it's, it's different <laughs> hopefully it's, it's all um, worth it in the end though more i um, i it's so crazy i lose my language that's it's an interesting way pretty good it. so if you want to lose your mother language <laughs> which is not english mm -hmm. so just record crazy sign that says uh, it's uh, forbidden to uh, vomit exception is uh, when you are de uh, for the death with uh, more than uh, 1.5 promil promil as well promil like drunken people bro <laughs> you have to <laughs> you, have to, you have to Pretty blow right? the machine like when Polly stops you yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I know what that is bro <laughs> we have <laughs> that in America yeah. too bro. <laughs> this is all you right the four yeah. days just all you all me bro Tension release. Tension release. Tension release. You like this? Oh my god, no, I'm ready to get outside. <laughs> <laughs> 
RBX JM6, the OG John Myung signature from Yamaha. He switched to a different version of this bass uh, around the Octavarium era and then went to Ernie Ball. But um, the preamp in this bass that I've had to swap out once is so badass and has such a built in, out, ready to go tone that uh, this has been the bass on like the first Pomegranate Tiger album, uh, Mammoth, Oni. Uh, it's got like six or seven albums under its belt and it was a no-brainer that we were going to use this one for this album as well. But the, the tone's all in this, this fret wrap. Oh yeah, without that. With the matching wouldn't even cable. I mean... Yeah, I, got, I had to get lock. the le leopard print groove gear to match the Malmsteen signature strap. Is this your actual DNA? No, it's an infinity symbol. I thought it was a DNA helix. It's like an infinity helix. <laughs> Exactly. Just sing on it. Hold your... What holds your neck, the ganja ba? How are you feeling today? Better. Okay. Yeah. Better. Yeah. Good. Ready to go. Do you need your, your cozy, guys? One second. Gotta keep those toes warm. Rain odd syndrome? <laughs> Brother E. Brother E.
What is that? Sounds like a Pop-Tart commercial. What's been your favorite uh, Williams score over the years? Mm. I go with Hook. That's eclectic for Williams. Love Hook. It gets over, over, uh, people don't think of that one. The sad thing about Hook is that you look at the Rotten Tomatoes score and I think it like rubs a lot of, you know, kind of uh, Gen Zers the wrong way. People are so into like looking at the rating prior. Hook was like so dank as a kid. It was incredible. It's it's phenomenal. The set, minimal CGI. Dude, Dust, Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman, Robin Williams. This is dank breakfast burrito. Clearly made by someone who grew up in SoCal. Won't, won't find this out in the South. Uh, you know, my egg hash brown, bacon, put some Cholula in there. It's all the classics. Habanero Jill. sound like to you? Worm sign? <laughs> no. no. Oh, it sounds like the sickest episode of how it's made ever. In terms of what being made? Uh, that are making like break discs mm -hmm. and there's like an epoxy <laughs> and uh, it's going through the line and they're like, now we take the uh, break drum and we <laughs> pair it with the adhesive, highly toxic, which is why <laughs> workers have to wear these uh, hazmat gloves. <laughs> Dude, it's the same shit. And what are you doing there? Just finding that sweet spot. Okay, right in the middle, and then. And you've, you've been doing Whoops. this. You've been doing this every take, right? Twelve o'clock, and then. But every single take has had a different setting, right? No, just I always got to make sure I find that little notch. There it is. Up oh, there. Oh, there we go. And then crank that. Sick. Could we get this ad? Last two notes of the last song. <laughs> All right, we gotta hold it forever. You ready? Yep. I think you're a little early. Well, let's do it again. To be here today recording this record is a, an honor and a privilege. And I'm really proud of what we've accomplished together and, and what you've done since... We, we never really split past, but you know, life took us on our different ways. We've, we've sent a lot of memes on the daily. Yeah. Thank God for Instagram. Um, One of the benefits of social media. The Bene, Bene Gesserits of social media. And uh, we've grown a lot musically, personally. Um, but what we did today was basically the same. Same cross. shit we've always done. Yeah, exactly. Just a little, more, a little more refined. More refined, more tech, more complex. Uh, more nuts. More nuts. <laughs> these nuts. They put genres next to all these bands. For uh, Upoy at this one venue, I think we, as a joke, wrote on our website "Cream Theater" and they printed it out, which is fucked.
The good times. So one, three, five, seven, diatonic. Yeah. C major. Well said. <laughs> He's not that tight, bro. He's, uh, it's how you say Bush League, bro. <laughs> what do your pits smell like right now? Pits smell like fucking chicken pot pie. <laughs> Make mince meat out of Mince meat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and here we are with this new banger of an LP, which is insane. I don't even know how you write this stuff. Like I was saying earlier, it's like, that. how do you come up with that? It's hard to it's hard to articulate how it all comes together because I think it just it happens. You know, you probably yeah. feel the same way when you're writing your own stuff. It's like, where does it where does any of it come from? I you guess know? so. Uh, it's more intriguing when I feel like there's a real confident like style or like the note choices and like tonality all like culminates into a style mm -hmm. and I feel like you really encapsulate a style. So it's fascinating and I always want to know how that comes together I guess. But I guess at the end of the day it's all like influences and experimenting. Yeah. So how has your mixing process changed over the years? Because that's like a very, mm. how, do we, how do you even answer that question? Oh man, I guess um, I'm, I think there's like the ear component growing, like I'll hear things that I was doing in the past and made me realize like I didn't really have quite a direction so much in my head. I, I mean I had a good technical ear I think pretty mm -hmm. early on where I would just kind of know like the, how EQ and compression can ultimately lift, elevate things, but I think now it's more of like how do I make this feel like it has like a vibe and an energy and like I'm really getting the most out of this piece of music that I've been given. So not that being as technical sense. and being more like feel based. Yeah, like, yeah, I guess the short answer is like, can I translate all this technical studying I've been like obsessing over into just something more gut organic? Related? Yeah, exactly. So that's really the big change. I mean, the nerdy aspect is like, I have more plugins. Mm -hmm. I've been playing with, and I guess there's that element of it I'll always like, but I'm always going more and more back to the gut feeling, like I'll listen to the mix, not with the DAW open, like yeah. in the car, just like in my headphones. Does it make you feel like, anything? Yeah, something just doesn't feel right. Yeah. Instead of like, oh, the 5K is too abundant in this, or you know, just something too in the weeds. Yeah, you know? I think that gets lost a lot of the times when we sit in DAWs for so long because when we're listening to our favorite albums or stuff, it's when we discovered them as kids, so we just thought it sounded really cool in the moment. We're not focused mm -hmm. on any of the technical aspects of mixing at all. It's like, how can we kind of get back into that mindset when we're mixing to take yeah. away from that? Like we need everything to be a certain way when it's just, if it sounds good, it is good. <laughs> yeah. It's a blessing and a curse, dude. Like, I love that I can see, like, what the low end looks like. Like, the visual components have such cool advantages, but then there's that curse of, like, there's this, a real psychological, like, syndrome where staring at the arrangement window of a DAW mm -hmm. makes you think something is, like, or makes you not listen to a song, like a song. You're watching it. Yeah. Like, it's even just, like, turning the chair around like this away, yeah. like, you're suddenly you're, like, listening in a... Your brain just like shifted. Sounds sick. <laughs> <laughs> rushing prog sounds like a paradox, like rushing progressive yeah, music. You can't. I couldn't imagine yeah. trying to crank out something as fast as possible almost defeats the purpose. It's like a therapeutic thing at the yeah. same time. You know? Yeah, you should be having fun. Like a zero pressure situation for, for art, as ideal at least. So. There's always going to be some weird outer pressure that you never even like thought about though as the process starts though, That's whether it be another like personality coming in, mm. or just schedule wise or anything or just life sure. getting in your way too. But I feel like the art should you know, reflect that, hopefully. Yeah, that's a good point actually. Our writing's always been a bit like cerebral. Like it'll start with like a gut idea, but sometimes it can get cerebral. I don't know if it's ever been super influenced by like 
well, I'm in a really bad mood today. It's time to write something. I think it's sub subliminal. You probably can't even articulate it, but that riff is coming from, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of pissed off today, yeah. so maybe that's why you're doing that, you know? But yeah, that's a good point. I never thought about that, really. But I'm going to, like, ponder that more. But, I, I mean, clearly, emotion, uh, certain emotions are, like, you know, evoked, invoked uh, with certain types of music, so why isn't it the other direction? Like, what you're feeling puts into the music. Yeah. I, it can be anything. I mean, that's what's cool about it. It never has to be prescribed, so... I mean, that's what's exciting with progressive music, because you, you don't really know how it's going to come out when you sit down and start writing it. Yeah. Yeah, song structure's out the window. Oh, it's gone, completely. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's, that's what draws me to it all the time. I've never mm -hmm. wanted to create something where the listener knew what was going to happen. That right. defeats the purpose of listening. Yeah. I mean, movies, people like that in movies, mm -hmm. you know. I, people will complain when a movie I mean I'll even see people complain when a song predictable too but it's kind of like well then you know what you signed up for if you're listening to like a pop song yeah exactly and some people want that yeah you know? I sometimes think, I like it yeah. I like a chorus that comes back you need yeah. it yeah you need it sometimes but for this kind of stuff I think the audience also expects the unexpected yeah there's a, there's an aspect of it where they want to be surprised when they hear something new yeah. in this kind I mean, of genre circling back to your music you do a great job of that where like you stay engaged but you're like okay anything could happen like what's going to be the next yeah move? what's the fun of it yeah. yeah well I think um this mix has been killer for from my perspective just seeing you crank it out on a day to day basis and it's been a lot of fun just seeing how your style has grown over the years but it also kind of stays true to who you are so thanks, thanks for being a part of this one man dude it's been a pleasure thanks for trusting me with your music it really means a lot because even from like day one of like hearing what you were like i remember you sending me that everything that is you demos and i was like i have to do this <laughs> i have to work on this like i hope he lets me do it uh, so it's always so fun dude and i really like how this aesthetic or this one of this one came out too it's got this really cool blending of modern and organic feel. Mm -hmm. I love when things can kind of sit in their place and be organic and like still feel like it's really being pulled off. Yeah. Not like giving into this ultra modern metal mm -hmm. sort of aesthetic. Because there's parts know. of the ultra modern aesthetic that are cool that I like a lot too. I think you do too. It's like how yeah. can we capture all those good parts while still making it sound like it's three guys in a room playing together. Yeah. Which That's is tough. Challenge. It's tough. Yeah. yeah. It's a fun challenge though. And when it's pulled off it feels rewarding. Yeah. For sure. Totally. But yeah, man. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Explain this shirt, too. Um, Guy did the album art for Polymorphism. Yeah, awesome, dude. A great friend of yours uh, from Santa Cruz? Uh, no, I met him in L.A. In, oh, um, Through a friend in Santa Cruz, yeah. Dorian Yarn Nelson. And I mean, it kind of speaks for itself, It's and it's a powerful imagery. It's funny. We used to make jokes about getting iced by Disney and Lucas. <laughs> And, um, Some lady in uh, Germany was pretty offended by the. Uh, the yeah, she, she didn't like that part. I mean, it's, it's art, lady. It's mm. beautiful art. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Some else could get offended by that. This really, there's really, there's no winning these things. You're, these you're days. gonna offend everybody. It's something. Um, it's been funny tracking, especially sitting with you, and and watching Aliar for like a week straight too. I don't think I could be. Um, in a room with anybody else while tracking and every single part I tracked to this record I was alone in a, in a locked room it's kind of isolated I guess because I'm so in my own head and I need that kind of space to to create so I've thought about that during this process yeah because you probably would have took so many uh different uh not only like stylistic choices or just takes in general that sounded like yeah, that's good enough. But we're so hyper focused on making it sound as good as we can. There's, like you were saying, there's so many takes that have probably been deleted that were just like totally fine that most people just wouldn't even tell the difference from with the the ones we use. While recording, and you'll be like drilling me to get a part, and I'm trying to figure it out. At very vulnerable moments as a player, and I have to like check my ego, and you're like. And like trying to get in my face, and I'm thinking, dude, no one's doing this to you when you're recording. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, like, yeah, I feel like a dick. I in think those you, moments. I, I think you realize that, like, not uh, that that's hard to do, and uh, are very accommodating. And even if I think I'm stressing you out, you're you understand. 
the yeah, dynamic that I just we, said. We just want it to be as fast as possible. Um, when I'm at home, I try and practice things that I think will make me better. And I always play things that I kind of already know how to do and are within my wheelhouse. But this has been like a boot camp almost. I'm playing to a metronome with a guy telling me to come up with something on the spot at a fast tempo and get it like airtight. Like I'll be off like a millimeter and you're like, you're so late. And I'm like, so late? Like <laughs> it's saying, literally yeah, like am that. Am I saying it like that? However, my playing has gotten so much better. This is the ultimate practice session for me. And mm -hmm. it's been awesome. So like, uh, I even if I seem stressed, I get a lot of, out of the experience. I hate hearing my voice. Hence why we do instrumental music. <laughs> it's just so cringy, you know? Because I think I sound a certain way, and then you play it back, and it's like, damn, that's what other people are hearing? I guess it's like guitar playing, too. It's like, I think I'm a certain thing. And I guess it's just the predisposition that other people are always going to be hearing it differently than you, you know? Mm. The art versus artist dilemma. Because I listen to other people with such, like, critical ears in a different way that I listen to myself. It's like I'm giving myself leeway because I've known the progression, but no one else is knowing that internal struggle or debate over all those years, right? These little deviations of everything that is you. Oh my god. You've been waiting. You gotta detach. I've been struggling to find kind of the right album art and feel for the record too because it's hard to articulate like what does this even look like you know i know what it sounds like but how do i put that into a picture that translates where people can see the album cover and be like oh that actually you know makes a lot of sense well you take the dimension and then you invert it god damn it <laughs> these are good dude yeah sorry 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 yeah eight in the boat Hopefully well you don't want it to be um you want your idea to be have form, not be shapeless. Damn, that was good. Because <laughs> I had you. <laughs> Been hearing the birds again too, which is sweet. You woke up the other day and you're like, "Yeah, this bird outside my window is going." <laughs> and that was like a rhythm motif. It probably carried into some fill we were trying to track. It's the same. Every time it's really funny. No one's counting. That's a mating call, right? Oh, sure. Is that what they're trying to do? Just Not necessarily. Away? Yeah, it can be. A call for their brethren? Mm -hmm. Yo, I'm over here, dude. Yeah. I feel like they just do it because they have to. But they, it's really creative. It's like, Eww! like a dive bomb, and then he goes, dilly, 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 five times. Yeah. Like ten times in a row, and then goes to four, then two, then it repeats. So it's like, I was it's, counting. it's a compound time signature. It was like a sequence. Yeah, like where does that come from? Because they're sitting outside our window here, something in 579. Yeah, you get lost in the, the cacophony. I was literally going to say that, the cacophony before. Shout out to the coffin. Process of recording you guys and trying to let you guys kind of shine and not be so strict for, uh, yeah, play this, play this rhythm exactly, you know. Here's this polyrhythm and there's, there's a riff in the middle of song, song nine, where it's got a pretty straight ahead, um, programming on it and he, Howie Yard just did something that was like Dennis Chambers, like on the, on the spot. And we, we were all kind of cracking up in the, uh, in the engineering room, and it sounded so wrong at first, but the more we listened to it, we're like, yeah, that's kind of what this album is all about, just to say, you know, fuck it, kind of do it, so. Yeah, it's been fun. So that's your favorite part about it? Yeah, I just more the, the unexpectedness of how it's coming out. Um, yeah. That's where the magic happens, and it's not easy to get to. But when you do, when you dig. Yeah, almost comical at first, but yeah, I wouldn't expect it to be kind of any other way after you, after you hear the change. Say we have like an innate ability to polymorph.